Hello everyone, I'm Adriano and in this video we're going to be talking about how to configure your AWS credentials to work as a web connection in FME Workbench. In this video we're going to be configuring your AWS credentials in the Identity and Access Management Console in AWS and then later creating a web connection in FME. We'll be specifically applying this to S3 but you'll be able to use the same concepts and apply it to other resources. So the requirements to follow along in this tutorial is you need to have access to an AWS account with a user which has permissions to create new users in the IAM console. FME has various connectors to many resources within the AWS ecosystem. These connectors make it easy to read and write data without writing any code. For example, we can read and write data from S3, write to simple notification service, read and write to simple queue services, and run queries to AWS Athena. There's even integration with Amazon's AI services such as Recognition and Comprehend. But before we can use all these connectors, we will need to set the correct permissions on our AWS user in order to get it to work. So let's go ahead and get our credentials specifically configured to connect to S3. All right, so we're going to start off in our AWS console and we're going to open up IAM in the AWS console. Now we're going to select users and we're going to add a new user. Now it's important to add a new user and restrict the permission so this user doesn't have access to all the AWS resource. So I'm gonna call him data underscore S3 uploader. All right, and we're gonna select off uh, programmatic access. So this will allow us to add the access key ID and the secret access key in uh, FME. So now it's asking us to set the permissions for this user. So we're going to go to attach existing policies. Now we actually don't have a policy that exists right now. So we are going to create a new policy. All right, so it asks us to select the service we want uh, to create a policy for. So we are again going to be reading or sorry, we're going to be uploading to S3. So we're going to select S3. And now it, access, it asks us for the access level. So we're going to be uploading a file. So we're going to go to write. And we're going to use put object. Okay. Now notice that this uh, resource is selected. to specify object resource ARN for the put object. So we can't just go forward. We actually need to select that. And um, we are going to add the ARN. So if we go to our S3 buckets, we're going to be uploading to this particular empty bucket right now. So I'm just going to copy that name. Go to add ARN and I'm just going to put in the bucket name. So when I do this, it's going to restrict the permissions to the specific bucket and I'm just going to select any so I can upload to any object in my bucket. Okay, now that looks good and we're going to move forward to review policy. We'll need to provide a name for this policy. So let's call it S3 underscore uploader. And we'll give it a description, which is uploads files to specific S3 bucket. Okay, and we're going to hit create policy. So we now created that S3 uploader policy. Now going back to our user that we are creating, we can now, if we just refresh this, um, we can go to custom policies because the custom policy I created and we see our S3 uploader policy there now. You notice it's it says uh, used as and none so it's not being used anywhere right we just created it and it's gonna ask us for tags we, you know this, this is optional I'm just gonna leave it blank for now um, and we're gonna create that user. Now here we get our access key and our secret access key. We're gonna add the access key ID and secret access key as a web connection in FME. So now we're going to open up our workbench, we're going to go to tools, go to FME options, and we're going to go to web connections, and we're going to add a new connection now. So we can just use AWS web service, call it S3 uploader, and now we're going to use the access key and secret access key. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that here. And we're going to now upload that secret key. Okay, and now the region. So my region is Canada Central, so I'm just going to select that. Perfect. 
So we now created our credentials. It's connected to S3 to upload files and we should be good to go. So now let's select the files we actually want to upload to S3. Just to test this, make sure it's all working. So we're going to use the director and file path names to basically list a bunch of files. Um, I'm going to use this folder S3 FME connection. Okay. So if we inspect this, we'll see all the files I have in this directory. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we want to upload this to S3. So in order to do that, we're going to add our S3 connector. And I'm going to connect that. Now for credential source, we're now going to use that new web connection we just created. So it was S3 uploader. And we're going to select the region, which was Canada Central. All right. Now, what's important, we, all, we can skip all the other parameters, but we need to ensure that request action is upload. And now we're going to say we want to upload file. Um, and for a file to upload, we're going to use the variable called path windows. So they give us all the files in that path. All right. Now for bucket, again, we can go back to S3 and the bucket name was Adriano data uploads put in the bucket there and now for a path we're going to call it uh, data. Now if this object doesn't exist already it's just going to automatically create a new object in S3. Alright and I'm going to hit OK. So now let's give that a run. If all goes well we're going to write successfully. Alright there we go. So we have actually six files that were uploaded um, now if we give this a little refresh, what do we know? It added that new object called data and we have all our files. There we have it. We successfully set up credentials in AWS console to upload multiple files to a specific S3 bucket in FME Workbench and it wasn't too hard to do. Hopefully this video was useful and you see how it can be applied to connect to other AWS resources as well. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my next one. See you next time.